Hello, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to The 2000% Nation, the book that helps you understand what you can do to contribute to helping your country, as well as every other country, be at least 20 times more fruitful for expanding and improving God's kingdom. Today we'll be talking about what for-profit companies should be doing to, uh, in terms of serving godly purposes. And as always, I'd like to begin by quoting from the Bible, in this case, the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 29 and 30 in the New King James Version. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father or mother, or wife or children, or lambs, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first, will be last, and the last first. The leaders of for-profit companies usually assume that their firm's purposes are solely to increase earnings, cash flow, and the value of the owner's holdings. Most business schools teach these purposes to be paramount, as do many free enterprise advocates. Without spelling out all the reasons for these purposes being helpful, let me note that a key underlying assumption is that seeking more private gain will provide the most public benefits. Otherwise, resources might be wasted in providing what few, other than the leaders in the for-profit organization, really want or need. While there's a lot of wisdom in such purposes and related assumption, serving godly purposes adds a number of valuable performance dimensions that many for-profit companies neither consider nor attempt to accomplish. Ironically, Accomplishing more in these godly performance dimensions will also vastly increase private gain. Isn't that interesting? In this chapter, I briefly explain the performance dimensions of serving godly purposes in for-profit companies and practical reasons why these dimensions are important. If you're interested in this subject, I'll also read chapters 10 and 11 in Adventures of an Optimist, where I discuss many of these performance dimensions for greatly accelerating godly improvements. If you would like a more general discussion of these performance dimensions, read the blueprint for more dimensions of complementary benefit breakthroughs located in Appendix B of Help Wanted. For-profit companies can be valuable contributors to establishing and improving 2,000% nations through providing more of the physical resources and support that make it possible for individuals, families, and communities to more often live as God intended while serving Him. In making these contributions, for-profit companies have the potential to help improve health and to deliver physical resources needed to serve God more fruitfully in quantities that will astound all those who examine what these companies learn to accomplish, further testifying to the greatness of His plans improving all of our lives. To simplify uh, the experiences, uh, excuse me, the explanations, the understanding of what uh, needs to be done by for-profit companies, I've grouped the performance dimensions of their godly activities into the following topics. First, accomplish exponentially more of what is done today, but with no added resources. Second, exponentially increase stakeholder benefits to strengthen stakeholders' abilities and encouragement to cooperate with the firm. Third, assist competitors in copying the company's activities to help increase the firm's innovations by at least 20 times. Fourth, profitably solve large social problems to generate at least 20 times more value in social benefits compared to the company's increased earnings. Uh, fifth, enable large numbers of underemployed people to become highly productive, such as by improving entrepreneurial capabilities among those who are partially prepared to succeed. And finally, streamline the organization's use of 2,000% uh, solution processes to speed up by 20 times the rate and frequency of creating godly breakthroughs. By separating these purposes into different topics, I don't mean to suggest that for-profit companies should pick and choose among these performance dimensions. Uh, instead, each dimension is an essential part of serving God's will and contributes to exponential increases in the godly value of all the other improvements. For most organizations, attempting to accomplish all the performance dimensions at first will be too difficult a task. For that reason, I've arranged these topics to reflect the ideal sequence 
for working on them. As each performance dimension is accomplished, a for-profit company should then begin seeking to achieve more on the next dimension, thus being able to accomplish exponentially more of what is done today with existing resources. In this case, let me begin by quoting from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they now have continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own homes, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. They also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. As these verses demonstrate, Jesus could accomplish a great deal very quickly with few material resources. Notice that even the leftover food was retained and measured, and its volume greatly exceeded the initial amount of bread and fish provided to Jesus. Now that's a wonderful example of being a careful steward of resources. In the same way, for-profit companies should be diligent in providing more with their sources of time, money, assets, and effort that God has given them making good use of even any scraps that remain. Four complementary performance enhancements are required. First, increase sales of their offerings by at least 20 times while requiring no more resources. Second, reduce unit costs of supplying, producing, delivering, purchasing, and using offerings for all stakeholders by at least 96%. Third, shrink per unit asset use, in other words, net investments, for all stakeholders by at least 96%. Fourth, lower the cost of capital. By that I mean the cost of acquiring and keeping all the money used to operate for all stakeholders by at least 96%. Increasing the sales of a for-profit company's offerings by at least 20 times while using no additional resources of time, money, assets, and effort is just one way of serving many more people while also providing more offerings to those who already use them. This performance dimension may also be accomplished by providing the same volume of offerings, but with only one twenty-first or less of the current level of time, money, assets, and effort, or any combination of more offerings being provided and using fewer resources that increases by at least 20 times the combined productivity of all resources used to provide the offerings. To improve health and increase the physical resources that God intends for those that live in a 2,000% nation, for-profit firms will need to become more fruitful in producing their current products and services. That's because many people otherwise lack some of what God wants them to have. Some of such increased physical fruitfulness uh, may also contribute indirectly or directly to enhancing spiritual, moral, and emotional fruitfulness. Only God knows how it will happen, but he is faithful in leading us to do what will release the results he wants. Certainly the provision of food described in Mark 8, verses 1 through 8, is such an example of expanding fruitfulness in many ways, as people were fed both physically with food and spiritually through observing a miracle that demonstrated Jesus' authority. It's not enough just to become more productive by using the same or fewer resources to make many more existing uh, offerings available. The out-of-pocket costs of those offerings must also become quite small, for all stakeholders in supplying, producing, providing, purchasing, and using the offerings. Otherwise, those who produce the offerings uh, won't be able to afford to produce more, and many of those who need the offerings will not be able to purchase and to use them. At a minimum of accomplishing this performance dimension of for-profit firms' godly potential for fruitfulness greatly enhances the availability and affordability of offerings needed for supporting health and providing necessary physical resources. 
Uh, the fruitfulness dimension of reducing the assets required for supplying, producing, providing, and using offerings is necessary for all stakeholders to benefit from the enhanced availability of the offerings. If asset needs aren't reduced, then many of the potential godly benefits will be lost. For instance, reducing the cost of fuel for a vehicle by 96% will help someone who can't afford to acquire, to lease, or to rent any vehicle. Even with such a vast increase in fruitfulness for making offerings available, creating and using some offerings will require more financial resources than some stakeholders have. And those stakeholders will first need to build their savings or to borrow money. In many parts of the world, purchasing housing demonstrates the importance of this performance dimension. The necessary funds can be saved uh, much more rapidly or acquired a tiny fraction of today's cost then any items that require large financial resources can be acquired much sooner, providing many more benefits. As an example of serving multiple dimensions of potential benefits, Habitat for Humanity projects have shown that simultaneously improving all of the housing in a neighborhood uh, where poor people live helps upgrade the spiritual and moral development of all neighborhood families on proving only one home in a neighborhood has a much smaller effect on just the one family that gains spiritual and moral benefits as a result. Combining these four performance dimensions is important uh, to focusing for-profit companies on becoming as fruitful as God intends for them to be. After succeeding, the ultimate increase in bright offerings for a nation's people can be as breathtaking as when Jesus took seven loaves and a few fish and multiplied them to feed thousands of hungry listeners. When God is given the credit by companies for their remarkable fruitfulness in providing these benefits, he will be glorified to all who are touched by this great increase. That such accomplishments should occur is much easier said than done. For instance, while many know that Jesus was able to multiply loaves and fish uh, to feed multitudes, I don't know if anyone else who has ever, ever had miraculously done so so lest you feel lost in knowing what to do next in accomplishing these performance improvements through natural means. While drawing on supernatural guidance, let me direct you to some books produced by the 400-year project that address how for-profit companies can increase their productivity in these dimensions by at least 20 times, especially in expanding sales and markets, reducing costs, and eliminating assets. The 2000% Solution, the 2000% Solution Workbook, the Ultimate Competitive Advantage, the 2000% Squared Solution, and Business Basics. The Billionaire Entrepreneur's Mastermind has also done extensive work on how to reduce the cost of capital, uh, and those lessons are described in the Advanced Business Series, of which there are three books. Uh, contact me uh, at ask, ask Don, D O N Mitchell, M I T C H E L L, that's ask Don Mitchell at yahoo.com with any questions you have. Let's look next at uh, expanding, uh, increasing shareholder benefits in ways that strengthen stakeholders' abilities and encouragement to cooperate with the company. And we'll begin that discussion in the next part of this lesson, in the, in the next video. For the meantime, may God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Goodbye for now.